everybody, it's Tay from Roy's, and today I'm going to show you how to make a local LLM with Godot using the Nobody Who plugin. So first, let's grab the plugin. So we can go to the asset store in Godot and just search Nobody Who. And we can install this download. And while this is downloading, we're going to have to get a model and an embedder for our project. So let's go to our web browser. Let's open a new tab and let's look up Gemma 2.2b, 2-2b, and I forgot GGUF. So click on this link and go into files and versions and download whichever one I like this one. So click this one and download it. Next, we're going to have to get an embedding model. And so if you're wondering what an embedding model is, an embedding model is a way to compare text to see how similar it is to each other. And nobody who uses this. So we can get an embedding model by searching user BGE M3. And by the way, these are the recommended ones in the Nobody Who tutorial, which I have based my tutorial off of extensively. The code's on the GitHub. It's a fantastic thing. BGUF. And let's grab this one as well. Download it. All right, now let's show in the folder. And now let's drag these into our Godot project after we install the Nobody Who asset. So let's open our in file manager. And let's drag in our two projects into our Godot project. Perfect. Now let's create our scene to create our, our chatbot. Let's start with a control and let's add in a Nobody Who model. And then let's also add in a nobody who chat. Let's assign our model. So our model will be the Gemma thing we downloaded. You can also use DeepSeek, but I found DeepSeek too wordy for me. And I'm going to delete the res part of this model, of this path. And you'll see why towards the end of the video, it's so that we can package it in with our game. Now let's go into nobody who chat and assign our model and let's add our sampler. And I'm just gonna keep this as default Neurostat v2. Now let's add a panel container and I'm going to add a vbox container and a rich text label and a text edit. I'm going to set our minimum size to about 300, uh, 500 by 50 for our text edit. And our minimum is going to be about 500 on the X or the Y. Also, we're going to scroll following. This is all we're going to need for our scene for just a basic chat window. So let's save this and let's attach a script. And I'm just going to call this AI chat. So we're going to have to get reference to a couple things. So we're going to have to get reference to our rich text label. So on ready var AI text equals rich text label. We're going to have to get ready to our text. We're going to have to get reference to our text edit. So text edit equals text edit. And we're going to have to get ready reference to our AI chat. The on ready's catching me up today. AI chat bot equals or nobody who. Perfect. So let's create a function to send just text to the AI. The most basic function we want to do. So func send text to AI. And all we want to do is set our text edit dot editable equals false. And AI chat dot say text edit dot text. That's the primary function we're going to need to just chat with our bot. Now let's activate this. So function input, actually function input. There we go. If event dot is action UI text new line. We're going to call our send text to AI. That's primarily what we're going to need to do. But we're going to have to get some signals to our script as well. So let's go back into Godot. Let's undo that. And let's get our response updated and response finished script to Godot. So connect and connect. So for our response updated, we want our chatbot to like give us the text as it gets it. So to do that, we could just get our text, no, our AI text plus equals new token. That's it. And now when we are finished getting the response, we want it, our user to be able to talk again. So text edit dot editable equals true. And we're gonna just switch our text edit text to empty text equals. 
that's it. Now we can test our AI bot. First, I'm going to give a pers it a personality because I forgot to do that. Okay, in system prompt, this is where you can give your AI bot you can tell it what to do. You can tell it to be focused on math. You could tell it, say, I want only one word responses. This is where you can do that. So I can say, you're a person named Sophia, whose only goal in life is that you want a clip. So let's run this and give our bot a test. Ah, see, I always forget this. AI text dot text. There we go. Hi there. How are you? And so this bot's just going to go on talking about paper clips. Now let's do some embedding. So embedding is a way that we can take what the AI, what the user says and activate code with it based off if the AI thinks it's similar enough to some keywords we give it or some sentences we give it. So let's do that. So I'm going to make a script that swaps between different personalities for AI bot. And so I'm going to duplicate our nobody who chat two times. And I'm going to name this one Sophia. I'm going to name this one minor and change the prompt. So I'm going to say you're an old coal miner who wants to tell horror stories about the good old days in the mine and you are going and finally a narrator you see all you know all you understand all you are the narrator now let's go ahead and add another model to our scene. So nobody who model, and I'm going to rename this one to embedding model. And we're going to add in a nobody who em embedding. I'm just going to keep it the same. So the embedding model is going to be this user BG M3 GGUF we in Scott earlier. Also delete the res like before. This is going to be for when we compile our project. And now we can assign it to our nobody who embedding. Perfect. So let's save this and go back into our script. So let's get access to our embedder. So on ready. And I'm going to call this NB embedder equals nobody who embedding. Oh, I forgot the var. There we go. And now we're going to have to create another function to set our embeddings for the game. And this is heavily based off of the game demo. That, that nobody who provides on their GitHub, it's linked in the description. If you need it in a different way, it's it's there. It's going to be extremely similar though. So funk game embeddings. And now we're going to have to create a couple sentences for our nobody who model to tell if we want to talk to a different person. So var sentences equals, and we're creating a dictionary here. So if you're wondering what we're doing. So the first person we want to be able to talk to is Sophia. And what would you say if you wanted to... Talk to someone named Sophia. You could say, could I talk to Sophia? Is Sophia there? Something weird. Yo, where's Sophia at? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this process for all the other characters in our, in our for AI. So I will be right back. Okay, we're back. So now I've got all the sentences I want to pair with what the user says with an AI. And so now let's create our embeddings. So var embeddings equals, and this is another dictionary, and I'll explain this in a second. So Sophia, we're going to go in the same order as we did before. But this time our dictionary is going to be empty. Dictionary empty and narrator. Dictionary empty. There we go. So we're going to have to now create a couple of for loops. So for the person in sentences so for every person in our sentence and now for every sentence for every person in the sentence for every sentence for the person person what do we want to do what well, we want to create our embeddings so embeddings dot or no person dot append await and be embedder dot embed the sentence let's explain what this embedder is doing now because you might think to yourself why don't we just return the sentences we've already got our data we've already already got everything we want well our embedder turns all our strings into vertices which is easier to compare and so now that we've got all our embedders and all our sentences into vertices we can just return our embeddings now let's create a variable to get the embeddings on ready var um people or purple people embeddings equals game a uh, new no. um await game embeddings there we go. Now we have our embeddings. Now we need a way to check if our sentences are similar. Again, this is going to be extremely similar to their game demo on their GitHub. Function match sentence, sentence of string. Okay, 
So we're going to need a couple of variables here. So var max similarity. And we're going to set this to zero. This is going to check which is the most similar object in our when we loop through our strings. Var most similar. This is going to be the person who is most similar to the text the user types in. In var input embed. And this is just going to convert the string we pass in into those lovely, lovely vertices that we so love. NB embedder dot embed sentence. And so we're going to do another <laughs> nested for loop again. For people in people embeddings, for sentences, or no, for embedding in people embeddings, but for this specific person, people. What do we want to do? Well, we want to check the similarity between the people. So var similarity equals nb embedder dot cosine similarity. I tried sine similarity. It's not there. The input embedded. So the one we got up before and the embedding we just got. So now if our similarity is greater than our max similarity, we're going to set our most similar to people. It should have been person, but it's people now. And we're going to set our max similarity to this similarity. We're going to create another variable and we're going to set a threshold for how similar the sentences have to be before we say this is a match. So var similarity threshold equals 0 0.9. The lower the number, the less the sentence needs to be super similar. And I realize I didn't use this. Don't go too low, though. If it's about 0.5, it'll just start taking one or two words out of the sentence and saying it's a match. So keep the keep this number high. If max similarity is greater than the similarity threshold we just set, return the most similar person we got had. Otherwise, return null. This is most of our code. This is basically it. So now all we need to do is check our sentences with our match sentence and then make changes to who we're talking to. Oh, no. no. <laughs> okay, so back in, not our input. Where's our send text AI? In our send text AI, we can do this. So var person equals await match sentence. And we're going to pass in our text edit dot text. If our person that we received back is not null, we know it had a match. And so now we're just going to check if person equals equals Sophia AI chat equals and we're just going to set it to Sophia. Now we're going to do this for every person. LF person equals equals I think it was minor AI chat equals minor else AI chat equals narrator. OK, yeah, I need to make a few adjustments. OK. I forgot to set this. We're going to default to the minor. Actually, let's default to Sophia. And I also want to set something that tells us who we're talking to before we talk to them. So let's set our text edit. That text equals you are now talking to plus person. And that's it. OK, now let's test this. Hi there. So I would like to talk to the miner. I think that's a sentence. Ah, I didn't get it close enough. Okay, what's something? Where is the miner? Okay, where is the miner at? Let's, where's the miner at? You are now talking to the miner. Okay. Hi there. How are you doing? Okay, the miner is now talking. You notice the dialogue is very different now. So you can do this with a narrator as well. This is going to take a while. So I am going to move on to the next topic. Next topic is compiling. You would think you could just go to a project, hit export, and that'd be it. But it's a little more complicated than that. Just a little bit. First, let's add a Windows compiler. And I'm going to grab the templates. We're back. We got our export templates. Okay. So let's go into project exports and export our project. And let's put it into the folder builds. Build. And we're going to save it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we have our project built now. 
and try and run our builds. And I'm going to run the console one just to show what's going to happen. There we go. Our console is going to go wild. Basically, because I don't know exactly why, but no, Godot does not include the nobody who AI or the AI models we had into our build. So the reason I excluded the res on our AI models is so that you can package them with your game locally and it can just get reference to them. So let's go into our, I accidentally closed it. Okay, let's go into our file manager again and let's just move these so the user and the gamma into our build folder. And let's run it again. There we go. And now let's say, can I speak to the narrator? I don't know if this will actually get us to speak to the narrator, but yeah, it didn't speak with the narrator. But we got the old miner, I guess. Or the paper clips. So we have the paper clips. Okay, that's all there is now. Now you can just zip this up, package it, and send it to people you want to send it to. Okay. That's it for this tutorial. If you got anything from this, appreciate a like. If you want to see more of this project, go to their GitHub page. It's linked below. It's an awesome project. Okay, see you guys.